This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. With Farm Bureau Health Plans, you'll get lower deductibles and premiums and less hassle. Visit FBHP.com. I'm Mike Keith. This edition of the OTP will introduce Follow Me Through Tennessee, a series that we will run monthly through the 2023 season. The idea was hatched by an Amy Wells wisecrack, which is also how the OTP was created. Amy made a comment last spring on the OTP about my penchant for finding special places in every county in Tennessee. She makes fun of me about it, but it is true. One of the best things about the job has always been traveling to every corner of this state, meeting some of the best people, talking Titans football, and discovering some of the best places to eat that you can imagine. This season, we'll introduce you to five outstanding establishments. The great Titans fans will learn about atmosphere, friendliness, and wonderful food, and a Titans helmet will let you know that the two-tone blue nation is always welcome. Follow Me Through Tennessee will not only introduce you to those five restaurants, but also to five talented people that accompanied me in my 2016 Nissan Frontier on these trips. You can catch the Follow Me Through Tennessee features on Titans All Access, on our social digital channels, and right here on the OTP. On the OTP, you'll actually hear our conversation from within the truck. So for the first, it's only fitting that Amy Wells was my travel partner. If you've ever wondered what our conversations are like off the air, you'll find out here on this Labor Day weekend edition of the OTP. We talk a lot of food, which we always do, not just when Amy's pregnant, but all the time. But we also get into her time with the Baltimore Ravens and the Indianapolis Colts, plus how she got the job with the Titans 10 years ago. We hope it doesn't bore you. We hope that it is a pulling back of the curtain, a sharing, if you will. Whatever it is, it is real. So stay tuned to follow me through Tennessee. But on this edition of the OTP, you get the first reveal. Amy Wells and my conversation from the ride to Putnam County Follow me through Tennessee on the OTP, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plan. So are you interested to know where we're going? I am interested to know where we're going. We are going east to Silver Point, Tennessee. Okay. Have you ever heard of Silver Point, Tennessee? I sure haven't, but it sounds like a place you've been to. <laughs> I actually haven't. Okay. It's near Baxter, Tennessee. Have you ever heard of Baxter, Tennessee? Absolutely not, yes. Mike. Okay, so we're in Putnam County. Have you heard of Cookville, Tennessee? Yes, I've been to Cookville, Tennessee. You've worked Many games times. in Cookville, Tennessee. That's I have exactly indeed. Right. All right, so that's where we're going to that county, to okay. Silver Point, and we're going to the Rose Garden Restaurant. Okay. The Rose Garden Restaurant in Silver Point, Tennessee has breakfast. Yes. Lunch. Yes. All kinds of great things to eat. Apparently the biscuits are outstanding. Love biscuits. But oh. what they're really known for is pie. 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 We're going for pie. Yes, not 3.14. I'm no. talking about real live pie. Ten different kinds of pie. Uh. People come from all over the state, actually all over the south, to eat the pie at the Rose Garden restaurant. Well, I want to be one of those people. I want to try the pie. Me too. I've never been. Really? Coach Mack has been. Oh, well, okay. Coach Doug Matthews took Coach Mack when they were over here recording a show, and Coach Mack swears by the pie at okay. the Rose Garden Restaurant, so it has the Coach Mack seal of approval. I have never had a bad dessert when I'm with Coach Mack, so I trust this place. I'm excited. I do too. So we are on the way to Silver Point, Tennessee in Putnam County and the Rose Garden Restaurant. And hopefully, traffic won't be too bad. All right. Well, let's go. Let's go. How is there a place you haven't been in Tennessee? Well, I mean, there are a lot of places I haven't been. And most of the ones that I haven't been, I would say, I've heard of. Like okay. the Rose Garden Restaurant. It's just my travels have never taken me to 
to have time to be able to pop over. I've been trying for the last three years since Coach Mack told me about this place. But I'm either generally coming or going or I'm calling a game or something over here. And then I've got to, you know, get back to the house or get back to the office or whatever. So I'm over this way a lot. And there's really no excuse that I have not been to the Rose Garden restaurant. You were waiting for me to come with you. Well, yes, let's go with that. That's what you should have just, that was your answer. That was my correct answer. Uh-huh. But you are going. I am. And, you know, you have been incredibly healthy through both of your pregnancies. All of us have been most impressed with your diligence. Well, you know, I try and eat a uh, fruit or vegetable, you know, which is a little different from my normal. <laughs> well, you behave quite well. My normal uh, diet. But I do, I try and be aware of, you know, getting all the food groups and all of those things. You just try to be careful because you're not the only person that is being impacted. But my sweet tooth is just on a different level right now. So being able to go and have pie. oh, Is it different from your first pregnancy? Uh, yes. In my first pregnancy, I wanted sour things. I wanted salty and I wanted sour. This time around, I want sweet. I want sweet and spicy. No kidding. Yeah. What's been your strangest crave so far? Oh my gosh. Um, it's more that whatever I'm eating, I need it to be the hottest thing I've ever eaten in really? my life. Really? Yeah, and I don't... But that's not usually your game. No, I like I like a good spice, but I don't like things to be overly hot because you know at some point there's a line between like flavor and just heat. Right. And I don't like to cross that line. You know, I want to be able to enjoy it and still just taste that it's a little spiced. Um, but right now, I need everything that I eat to be actually on fire. I need it to singe my esophagus. Like I, I don't know why. It doesn't sound healthy. Oh uh, no, it probably isn't. But it's just what I what I need, like a spicy pad thai. Oh man. Oh okay. Yeah, like I need everything to be super hot. A lot of hot chicken. I don't think the pie is going to be. But I mean, no. you can, hey, you could probably have something hot while we're here too, because again, yeah. the food is supposed to be outstanding. But here's the thing: immediately after that, I need something sweet. Ah. So this is right up my alley. This is going to be perfect for me. Well, we're going to get you in the middle of it, that's for sure. Oh, man. I just... All the pie... What did you say? There's ten? Ten different kinds of pies. Shoot, man. They're oh. known for chocolate cream or chocolate icebox. I'm not clear on that yet, Definitely. but chocolate. Yeah. And then coconut, which I love coconut. Oh, a coconut pie. But, There's not much better than But that. here's the problem. They're, really, the kind of pie I like best is cherry. Really? I love cherry pie. I okay. love cherry pie. But the problem... Because of the song? That's right. Yeah. Warrant, <laughs> cherry pie, she's my cherry yeah. pie. Yeah. Yes, thank I you. I figured. But my whole thing now is, as an adult, I don't eat a lot of sweets. No. So when I'm going to do sweets, I want chocolate. Okay. Because I don't want to waste the calories. Like, I'm not wasting calories on pumpkin pie, oh, generally. I and I am. like pumpkin pie. Um, yeah. But the thing is, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to sit down and say, I'm ruining my diet today for pumpkin pie. Oh. I'm going to ruin it for something chocolate. That's why I like the Dairy Queens. That's yeah. why I like the Sonics. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's my thing, but I'm going to get chocolate. See, I prefer on the whole a fruit-based dessert. I like fruit pies. I like fruit mixed into my ice cream. I like fruit like on top of a cheesecake or something like that. I, I like love, I love a cobbler. Be, yeah, with, I like with fruit vanilla ice cream. Yep. Treats. However, there is nothing like a good cream-based pie. pie. Yeah. Like like fudge pie. Fudge pie, a good coconut cream pie, I love a coconut lemon cream pie. Pie. I like lemon. It's not my favorite. The only pie I've ever encountered is in Indiana. They love the butter pies. Butter pies. Oh, with butter pies. What is that? It's gross. Don't even, don't even go down the road. It sounds terrible. You live in Indianapolis for a year, and everybody tells you you got to eat the butter pie. It's not. Mm-mm. Who told you that? Every, every single anyone Jim from say? Indiana. Did he tell you? Okay, they have it in the press box for every single Colts game. Butter pie. Butter pie. That's it's, poor. It's like 
You know chess pie, how there's the, kind of the layers to it? There's yeah, like the lower okay. layer, and then there's the chocolate top layer. Right. It's only the lower layer. It's just... Well, why not just of, go eat a crust? It's, it's kind of what it is. It's like crust filled with like a um, buttery, creamy, kind of the consistency of a... Uh, like a pecan pie, but no pecans. I've never heard of this. It's gross. I mean, unless you're from Indiana and then it's everything you've ever wanted in your whole life, but it's gross. Well, I mean, I have nothing against people from Indiana because I'm married to a woman from. She probably knows Indiana. about butter pie. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't, <laughs> she, she ain't doing butter pie. I've gotten a strict order that there better be a chocolate pie on the way home. Oh, see, you're a better man than I am. I didn't even tell my husband what we were doing because I knew he'd want sweets. And I'm not feeling inclined to share. Does so that if make you, me so not if nice? you break it, well, if well, you I'm walk not, in with a pie. I'm not getting into that. Here's the thing, though. With, there has to be solidarity here because if you walk in with a pie and I don't, that's a bad look for me. Yeah, well, that's your problem. Huh. So you're just going to hang me up to dry like Yeah, absolutely. That? All right. It's, it's going to happen. I'm glad we've established this early we've on We've established trip. the rules. Every man for himself. That's exactly correct. When it comes to pie. Yeah, my wife is chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Yeah. That's why I like her. But she'll do that stuff like if you give her something chocolate and she's not ready to eat it at that point, she'll like put it in the cabinet and lock it or, <sighs> or put it somewhere. Yeah. She's exactly like my Uncle Mike was. My Uncle Mike was famous if you we brought him some stuff from Hershey Pennsylvania one time uh -huh. and he took it he took it hit it somewhere he's like oh thank you very much and then he just left for a few minutes and then he came back and he didn't have it you know the big bag of Hershey's yeah. whatever just not sharing he hit it yeah and Michelle does the same thing that's smart that's a great play it's not very uh it's not very friendly but if it was a gift for you protect what's yours because I don't do that. I'll just put it in the refrigerator for later. Half the time you come back and it's like, oh, you wanted that? Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I, it was, no? It was kind of a thing. All right. It's gone. So, I mean, maybe the hiding's the way to go. But the question is, are you going to have something else too, or are you just going to try all ten pies? You've got to have a salty component to break it up. So you've got will to you have, have like savory. a will you have like a milk with it to kind of separate? Milk. You know. Well, but I'm saying. Kind of a monster. No, 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 no. But I'm saying that you will, you know, cleanse your palate, so to speak. Oh yeah, between. definitely. Probably with I mean, like coffee. Coffee. Yeah. These kind of places always have the best coffee. Too. They always have great coffee. They always have good like biscuits and gravy. You've got when you're going to a down home place, you've got to get the down home classics because otherwise you're missing an opportunity. Like they probably, and I probably won't go in this direction because again, you need a savory with the sweet. But I would guess they probably have incredibly good pancakes. Oh yeah. I would guess they have incredibly good like breakfast like scrambles or like a hash or something like that. You know? Oh yeah. That's that's what country cooking is. Because they got a they got a serious grill. Ugh. And you know it's back in the back and it's been there forever and it's like seasoned and exactly Soaked what you want. in all the flavors. Oh. That's like my like my grandmother's skillet was. Yeah. See, this is how Any, people need to eat. Anything that my grandmother did in that skillet was going to be unbelievable. You know, yeah. she do a grilled cheese or you know. It just and it would, up all it's got that. it's got everything. That's why when people come to this part of the country and they eat the food, yeah, for the first time they think they've died and gone to heaven. I tell every person that I know that moves to Tennessee, you are going to gain ten pounds, but that's just your new baseline. Enjoy it; you'll love it here because the food here in this region is better than any other food in this country. I and think I have it is no too. problem saying I that. I think it is too. And, and I mean, I'd like to, to say anybody. it's just Tennessee because I'm from Tennessee, but it's really the South. It's the South. I mean, you go anywhere and you get something. It's it's like one of the one of the best things in the world to me is when you get a covered dish at church. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that. 
<laughs> you know, that's that's but I, I mean because that's good food because these ladies and generally it's ladies, mm -hmm. they're going to bring out something and it's going to be like you got to be kidding me. Well, I mean, no, because nobody's like bringing a throwaway dish to something like no. that. I mean, this is cooking for the Lord, right? And so it's going to be your best stuff every time. Well, and I've never brought a throwaway dish to church. No, you bring the good stuff. No, but you get to you know those older ladies, and they don't exactly need recipes. And nope. They've got the, you know, the pieces they bring, and they they ain't done it in a microwave either. Oh no. No no no. Oh, my stomach is like I know. gurgling. It's so hungry. I can't wait. But I don't eat like this anymore. No. I, I don't have time to eat like this anymore because you've got to, you've got to sit down and yeah. we, enjoy it. Well, we just don't sit down no. the way we once did. I have tried to make a concerted effort to at least three nights a week cook and enjoy a meal. That's a great idea. At least three nights a week because things get a little crazy in my home. Um, we've got a lot of people going in completely separate directions at all times. But and at got least... A, and you got a one-year-old and another got a, one on the way. Yeah, I mean, we've got, we've got a lot of moving parts in my house. But three nights a week, I, I, sometimes it's a Friday night, sometimes it's a Tuesday night, you know? It's not always the same nights. But I cook a full meal. We can eat on it for a while. Yep. Um, but we sit down, we eat a good meal. Because there's something about eating a good meal that like sticks to your bones a little bit. Well, it kind of revives you. And the thing is, even if like, you know, I do the whole calorie counter thing. Yeah. And, and I know that. I don't mess with that. I know, I know. But the thing about what you're talking about is, even if you eat a big meal that is more calories than other things. Uh-huh. It sticks to your ribs, so to speak, so you're not going in and grabbing a handful of chips later or a handful of pretzels with peanut butter or whatever. Right. I, I think it's better for you. Yeah. I don't I think, think you can eat good. every meal like that. No. But, but, and it makes you so happy. I think it's, for me, it's better for my mind. Oh. It's a, it's a, it is a mental restart that like, I'm not, because if I snack, um, I eat what I call intern food, which is... Intern food. It, it's what I ate when kinda I did. You kind of got a name for everything, don't <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, I do. But when I didn't have any money and I was just kind of starting out as an intern and literally every dollar I had went to rent <laughs> and that was about it, I, I ate a lot of ramen noodles, apples and peanut butter, you know, pretzels and peanut butter, peanut butter on everything. Um... But just really quick, high processed things that you could do really fast. Chicken nuggets, Hot Pockets, you know, things that were cheap. By the way, just to stop you, I think they've got a peanut butter pie. I'll eat that. I think there's a peanut butter pie. So go ahead with your story. Yeah, I'll eat that. But anyway, so I, I keep these things in the house because they're easy things to just throw in real quick and eat. And you know something else that we're going by the Lebanon exit. This is where Cracker Barrel started. This is where the Wait world. Wait a minute, what? The world headquarters of Cracker Barrel is right down this road, right here. Wait, Cracker Barrel started in Tennessee. Lebanon, Tennessee, not Lebanon. You know that always. Lebanon. Lets me, that always lets me know somebody's not from here. But Lebanon is where Cracker Barrel started. Now you think about it, and that and that's why I think that's one of the reasons people like Cracker Barrel so much is because it's what we talk about. It's that kind of. Food. It's that kind of food. You sit down. And you feel like you're having something that your mom or your grandma made. And I gotta how have breakfast I, there every day. How did I not know this? I don't Their know. biscuits and gravy is phenomenal. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's really good. And a little plug for Cracker Barrel. Okay, here. that's good. They're catering? Phenomenal. Where did you have Cracker Barrel catering? Well, thank you for asking, Mike Keith. Cracker Barrel played a big part in catering my Thanksgiving this year because we were a little busy. It was kind of a crazy time of the year. My family was coming into town. I was like, I, I do not have the mental capacity. It wasn't the cooking, it was the purchasing groceries. So what I did do is I got a turkey and a couple sides from Cracker Barrel. They threw in a pie. Phenomenal. Did you get hash brown casserole? I sure did, thank oh, you, yeah. Hash brown casserole, turkey, and um, mac and cheese. 
I like their green beans a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. And baked apples. Baked apples are good. Yep. If you're seven. No. <laughs> all the time. Because you eat them, okay, ate them for Thanksgiving dinner and then ate on them for breakfast for like five days. Yeah. I, I can't do baked apples. I'll just, oh. have an, I'll just have an apple if I'm going to have an apple. Oh, Mike, you're so healthy. No, but I just. Lame. No, I'm not lame. <laughs> Those baked can, apples are good. I can get after some Cracker Barrel. That is apples in butter All right, with so sugar. so you just found out the Cracker Barrel's in Lebanon. Yeah. Great job by you there. That's amazing. Yeah, you've only been here 10 years. and You've, all the, you've never where, said that. Where are you actually from? I get emails from them. From Cracker Barrel? Yeah. Uh, yeah. More of my conversation with Amy Wells, but first, hey, Titans fans, it's always game on with Duncan, so grab a coffee and kick off the action, whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before watching the game at home, Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, we need to be at our best at game time, which is why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual because it's always the best call for football. Remember, America runs on Duncan. Where am I actually from? Where are you actually from? I am actually from Columbia, Missouri. That's not where you were born. Though. It's not where I was born, but that is the well, place. Where were you actually I born? I was born in Bloomington, Illinois. Bloomington, Illinois. Bloomington, Illinois. Yes. Um, so I've lived there for exactly six weeks okay so not really from there i've right. only been there maybe one other time um moved to johnstown pennsylvania yeah home of the big flood and the johnstown chiefs and, yeah <laughs> yes um lived there until i was seven okay spent a brief 10 months in um Hayes Valley, West Virginia. Where is that in West Virginia? It is directly in between Huntington and Charleston. Okay. Um, so lived there long enough for a school year, essentially. Okay. And then we moved to Columbia, Missouri when I was in the fourth grade. Okay. So, so that's you're, home. So you're from Columbia, Missouri. So I'm from Columbia, Missouri. Because we moved to Franklin when I was in fifth grade. Yeah. So I'm from Franklin. That's right. I if get you it. move somewhere in grade school. And, and that's then where you move. grow up. I agree. Yeah. I yeah. agree. That's not where I was born, but no. people ask me where I'm from. Right. I would say Frank. It's where you became a person. I don't know about that. I became a person in Columbia, Missouri. I also went to college there, so... And that's where you become a person. Theoretically. Yeah. I think so. Well, that's interesting. But... I, I, I knew you'd lived in some different places. I've... I bounced around early. But then you were in Baltimore. Then I was You know, that's the thing that a lot of Titans fans can't get over about you. That I worked for the Ravens yeah, and the Colts. Yeah, that you were Ravens, Amy. Yeah. Well, I wasn't even. I was... What did you do there? Intern number two. Intern number two. <laughs> Essentially. Um, yeah, I was a public relations intern for the Baltimore Ravens for my first year in 2011. And it was right after the lockout. Yep. Which, when did you get there? Oh, so I got there about six weeks before the lockout ended. Okay, so you got there in June. Yeah. The lockout, I remember the lockout actually ended on July 27th. Yeah. And I remember that because I was coming back. We did a whole family cruise. And I had essentially gotten no news about anything. And the first thing that when I turned my phone on, it came up that we were going to go back to work because... Mr. Adams was kind enough that he still paid us. Yeah. A lot of teams did not continue to pay their employees. And I got two kids and, you know, and it's like, man, I I need to keep getting paid. Right. And so that was a big deal. So go ahead with your story. Right. Well, so, so the Baltimore Ravens offered me the internship in June on a Tuesday. I moved to Baltimore on a Thursday. I had never been there. I knew nothing about anything. Just packed up my stuff and moved. Why did you? Why did you even do that? <laughs> did you always want to be in the NFL? Uh, well, I wanted to work in football. It didn't occur to me that I had the option of going to the NFL. Like uh, the idea that I could get any sort of position, internship or otherwise, in the National Football League didn't occur to me. I thought that I was going to have to work in a college for a while, and then okay. you graduate to the pros, you right. know? 
Um, but a friend of mine from my family's church back home, his cousin worked for the Baltimore Ravens in their communications department. He's still there now. And um, so he set me up with kind of an informal interview just to get an idea of what his job is and everything. We ended up talking for a really long time on the phone. And um, a couple weeks after that, he called and asked if I wanted to interview for their season-long internship position. I said, absolutely. Did the interview during a storm, so my phone kept dropping the call because it was storming so badly in Columbia at the time, so I had to keep calling them back. Um, Always a good way to make a good Yeah, impression. which is a great yeah. way to make a, a first impression. Well, you were memorable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely was. And um, they ended up offering me the gig, but the lockout was going on. So they basically said, hey, we don't know when this is going to end or if it's going to end, but when it does, we need you here. So we don't know how soon you can get out here, but we need you to be here and just kind of on standby. So I said, how about in two days? And they said, great. And I just packed up a U-Haul, moved out there, um, found an apartment. My dad had taken vacation time at the same time, just kind of coincidentally. And so he moved out there with me and, or helped me move out there, I should say, and hung out there for about six weeks. And then the lockout ended and I started that day. I'm like, great, come on in. Training camp starts tomorrow. So how did you transition from Baltimore to Indianapolis? Um, so my internship ended. I moved back to Columbia, Missouri, just back into my parents' basement, was there for a couple weeks and was just kind of reaching out to people around the league. And Chuck Pagano had been the defensive coordinator at the Ravens when I was there. He got the head coaching job with the Colts. So I, and Chuck Pagano was always so kind to me. He took care of me. He always made sure that like I wasn't alone on major holidays and you know, I made it to work on time. He just kind of looked out for me. Coach Mack-like. Yeah, very Coach Mack-like. Very, very much so. And um, so when he got the job at Indianapolis, it kind of put the Colts on my radar. And so I just started ambushing them <laughs> with calls and emails. And um, there were a couple other coaches that ended up going with uh, – Coach Pagano over to Indy, and so I had some some character references, and they uh, they put in a good word for me, and they ended up offering me the internship. Initially, they just offered me a training camp position, so to only be there during training camp, um, and then they had a couple people, a couple staffers who ended up leaving, and they needed the extra help. So they just asked me if I would stay the day before I left to go to Anderson, Indiana, which is where the Colts hold training camp. Still. They asked me if I would end up staying for the entire season. So I threw like a couple extra t-shirts and a lamp in my car. And I was like, I guess I'll figure it out when I get there. And I committed to the whole season. Again, sight unseen. I had never been to Indiana. I had never done anything. I just kind of rolled into town and figured you're it not out eating when the I got butter there. Pie. I'm not eating the butter pie, of which I learned when I got there. But you had a good um, experience there, right? I had a great experience there. Everyone, I mean, I know down with the Colts, but also everybody there was very kind. I've kept in touch with a bunch of people up there. Um, I, You make a lot of fun of me for being the, the queen of Indianapolis. No! But I think the city is really well designed for hosting events. I always enjoy when we go back there. We always eat really well when we're there. Um, so I enjoy, I'm glad that Indy is so close and I'm glad that they're in our division because I enjoy having the opportunity. To well, I mean, we, we work with, I mean, we want to beat the Colts butt every time we play them yes. by six touchdowns and they want to do the same to us. That's, that's how it is. But we work with people. It's like, you know how I feel about Bob Lamey, who was their play-by-play -play announcer. He's right. an exceptionally nice man and a professional. And uh, uh, The guy who's doing it now, Matt Taylor, is one of my favorite guys. And yep. they, they have some really, really nice folks that you get to know over a period of time. I'm not going to sit and say I love their organization or anything right. because we they're our competitors. We want to beat them. Yeah, bad. Yeah, of but course. But 
are there certain people that we think are good folks? Sure. Well, and that's the thing about working in the National Football League as a whole. There's so few people that get to do this. Right. And you get to know the people who are in your other position. So, who have your role for a different team. And you get to know the PR staffs. And you get to know these people. And you form real relationships with them. Like, uh, the person who interned with me in Baltimore is now my daughter's godfather. Like, that's crazy. But that's the person that I've made strong relationships with. He's worked for other NFL teams. I've, of course, worked for other NFL teams. But the friendship remains. How'd you hear about our job? Um, at a Super Bowl, actually. I was at the, oh my gosh, 20, I guess it would have been the 2012 Super Bowl. So it was the Ravens and the 49ers. Okay. And I was volunteering to work there as NFL PR people do or used to do. I don't know if they still do that. But at the time, if you needed a job in the NFL, you volunteered your time for about 10 days to go do PR for the Super Bowl because there's such a huge influx of media that a team PR staff of three or four people just can't handle that load. Okay. So the league brings in a bunch of people to serve as support staff, and that way the PR guys are able to, for the teams that are playing, are able to enjoy the experience a gotcha. bit more. So I volunteered to go. The Ravens, the team that I had just left, were in the Super Bowl, which was a real kick in the face. Um, but it made me very useful because I had relationships with a lot of the players and oh, a yeah. lot of the staff. So I was able to kind of be in certain places and no one really noticed I was there because I'm a familiar face. And um, so I was able to help out a lot. But anyway, I'm telling people that I'm looking for a job and kind of talking around. And there was someone from the Tennessee Titans, Craig Peters, who used yeah. to do a lot of with writing. the Vikings now. Yes, yeah, he's with the Vikings. Great guy. He did a lot of writing for uh, the Tennessee Titans and the website and all of that before Jim Wyatt. Um, and he said, well, we have a position that's opening up. Um, I know you're doing PR, and there's a lot of PR elements to it, but <laughs> it's also going to be kind of an, an on-camera role. Um, not sure if you'd be interested in something like that. He could have told me that you were washing the floors, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Sure. Like, sure. I'm, I just wanted a job in the NFL. I wanted to keep this thing going. Um, and so I sent him my information. I guess apply, I guess he forwarded it along. I don't remember actually applying for the job. Um, but ended up having a couple phone interviews, and then they brought me in for a real interview. And never did I realize how on-camera heavy it actually was. <laughs> I thought that it was mostly a PR job. Oh. And so I came if in, I only, interviewed with you. If you only knew the backstory. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm terrified to know the backstory because I don't. Um, I've never told you the backstory because I, I don't really want you to know. No? No. It's okay. probably bad. It's not bad. It's, <laughs> but it's, it's fascinating. Well, I thought this was a PR job. It was, primarily. Never, it was never a PR job. And I did a like an on-camera test with you. Yes, you did. And I thought, this is a weird thing to do for a PR job. And I don't really know how to do this, but I'll try. And I did. And I don't know if that tape exists. If it does, it needs to be destroyed. No. I um, think it exists, actually. I don't know where it is, but I think Jeff it... Jeff Harding would know where Jeff it is. Jeff Harding would know where but it I is. But I don't want to... We talked about that. the Colts. Yeah, we did talk about the Colts. Because I wanted to give you something to talk about that I knew you would know well. It's good you didn't ask about the Titans because I couldn't well, have Well, that wouldn't have been fair. I couldn't have said five Titans but, were. But that wouldn't have been fair. Yeah. The, the whole idea was you've just been there, and I was interested to see how much attention you had been paying. Well, I don't, I no, don't I mean, know that it, I had been paying a lot, but I got the job. Well, you talked about you know, what their off-season moves had been and what their strengths and weaknesses. I remember talking a lot about their offensive line, right. thinking this is a weirdly specific thing to be talking about, but that's nope. what's top of mind right now. No, but that was what separated you in the whole thing. Because I told Gary Glenn right after we did it, he said, he asked me, he said, she didn't have a lot of on-camera experience. And I said, oh, no, nope. we can work with her. Because nope. you, you had the knowledge. You understood what was important. That's what you were talking about in in that bit with me. 
is you were laying out what was important for the Colts offseason, which told me that you were plugged in to how things work and what people are interested in. Hmm. Because, you know, that's the most important part of the job is you can talk great. Yeah. You can look great. You can package things great. You can write great. But if what you're covering is something that people aren't interested in because you don't get it, mm -hmm. you have no chance. Yeah. And and you got that. Yeah. It was uh, <laughs> it was a terrifying portion well, of I'm the sorry. interview that I, I didn't expect. I'm sorry expect. that I, I, well, I, I, mean, you I didn't, didn't seem terrified. Oh, no. I fake it till you wake it. Well, I get it. But... I didn't realize what the job was until a, a couple weeks later when I showed up for my first day, which, oh, by the way, was going on the Titans caravan. In Cookville. In Cookville. In yeah. Putnam County. Isn't that crazy? You signed autographs. Ah, the serendipity of it. Yeah, which I was like, I shouldn't be doing this. And I'm you were so, ex all you were so excited to sign autographs. <laughs> well, no one had ever asked you for an autograph you before. Were, you, were, uh, you were a little excited. We, we might have chuckled a little bit about how excited you were to sign autographs. Oh, I'm sure, because I'm you, kept sure talking you made fun of me. Because you kept talking about how excited you were to sign autographs. Well, it blew my mind. Never had I ever. And I thought I was a PR person until this exact moment. <laughs> and that's that's when everything kind of changed. And I realized what this job was going to be. And, I mean, it's been, it's been about that crazy of a ride ever since. Like this ride. Yeah, like this ride. It's been great. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. That's right, the deal is finalized and SeatGeek is the newest member of the Titans family. If you haven't heard, well, get used to it because you'll be hearing it a lot more this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So, Titans fans can fan. Just past Gordonsville. Tell me about Gordonsville. Yeah, Gordonsville. Uh, this this isn't the first see, time is, I've heard you talk about this. This is uh, this is one of those places you'll love because you love high school football. I do. They are one of the great single A programs in the state of Tennessee. Gordonsville. Gordonsville. I remember they had they had a they had a great all time team. Yeah. In 1984. And yeah. won the Clinic Bowl, which was the state championship, against ECS out of Memphis. Yeah. And then they won another state championship 11 years ago when they were able to beat, who did they beat? They beat Huntington. Tyler Cohen was the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football that year. Oh. I think he was the lineman of the year. Yeah. When we... When there were less classifications, and we used to do back in line, but once they went to 19 classifications, we we had to kind of cut it back because we knew that the show was going to take. Yeah, it'd be hours. like it'd be like the <laughs> the Academy Awards if they did all of the uh, if they did all of the awards on on TV, you'd be there for like seven hours. You'd have to do lunch and dinner. But so they have been to the state playoffs over 30 times, I think it's like 35 or 36 times, which is really amazing because until 1985, only the district winner went to the playoffs. Now, it's it's tiered. I think four teams from each region go to the playoffs um, and, you know, it gives people a chance. In 85, they went to two teams from each district. But, yeah, they've won state championships and I remember Mark Medley was their coach in 83 and 84. I think they were runners-up in 83. They won the state in 84. And then uh, 2012, wow. they, they won it. And um, so it's, it's one of those really cool places where football is such a big deal. The last I checked, I think the overall population of Gordonsville was less than 1,500 people. And yet they have... And yet they have strong football, which is a community bond. Yeah. 
which is something phenomenal. That's why I love high school sports. Well, and if there's anybody who knows where there's good high school football in this state, it's you. Well, they were good when I was in high. I mean, they were a big story when I was playing. And so I would read the newspaper, you know, because you were hoping you got your name in the paper. Yeah. And you wanted to read about everybody else. And, you know, Brad Cowan was their big star. And uh, you knew all these names and they... They were such a big deal, and I still like to read all that stuff now. Yeah. Because I think it's fun to, you know, to think about, you know, those what what a big deal it is to those people. And your husband does an amazing job with our high school football stuff. And I mean, if if I had been around and the Titans invited me to be player of the week or coach of the week or to a camp or I mean, I would have just. I would have gone crazy. Well, it's it's such a cool thing to be able to listen. There's so much more that they want to be able to do when it comes to outreach. And if the Titans had a staff of 38 people who could just be doing high school football things, it still wouldn't be enough right. because there's so much that you could do in so many areas because the crossover is so natural and so easy. But being able to just put the Titans logo that means so much to so many people around here on different things and let guys be associated with that brand for a game for part of the Friday night football series that the Titans do when they come out and they bring cheerleaders and they get excited or being a coach of the week or being the game of the week or just being associated with an NFL brand and being able to wear that sticker, wear that stamp, you know, it makes the entire game, the entire school, and a lot of times the entire community that the school is in, feel like they're part of something so much bigger. To be associated with the yeah. NFL, it makes everything that much you sweeter. You know who digs all this too is Mike Vrabel. Oh yeah, isn't Mike that, Vrabel's isn't like that crazy? the biggest champion of it. Yeah, because well, he gets it. He gets it. Well, because I mean, he's still got pictures of him being the runner-up for state player of the year in Ohio when Mark Edwards, the running back who went on to Notre Dame, was the player of the year, and he was the runner-up. And I, I mean, and we, and we talk to guys all the time, and their college memories are special. Obviously, their Titans memories are special, but none of that eclipses high school stuff. No. Ever. No. Ever. And and that's not fa- they can make all this money and buy all these cars and build houses and you know all kinds of stuff and be famous and whatever. But man, if you talk to Derek Henry about Yuli, yep. I, I mean, he's going to talk to you about that. He'll talk to you about it, and there's always that game. You know, either that game where they balled out and it was incredible, and they just smile and grin, or the one that got away. The one that got away. Uh huh. And and that one that will always bug them forever. Ever. And the fact that that high school sports can have that lasting an impact on a person is, I mean, that's the best part of it's all. It's crazy. Of it. Rose Garden Homestyle Cooking, that's right it. there. It's a real place. It's a real place. We're almost there. Here's Old Baxter Road. And here it is. We're here. We're here. Oh, this really just sneaks right up on you, doesn't it? It says restaurant. Oh, you it's arrived. Huge. Destination is on your right. This is it. That does it for this edition of the OTP. We hope that you have a great holiday weekend. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for listening to the OTP. Welcome.